I began my first hospice assignment 12 years ago. My loved one was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And after a number of weeks of treatment, he decided to quit all treatment and just wanted to live the remaining days of his life as peacefully um, and as full as possible. And but most of all, he wanted to remain at home. So um, with the help, with both the suggestion and then the help of his physician, um, hospice was called. And I, I just can't tell you how wonderful they were, um, not only to him, you know, but to me as well. There was never a moment where we ever felt alone um, because we always knew that someone on our team was a phone call away if we needed it. One of the wonderful things was he, his wish was granted and he, he was able to die at home. And, um, and I know that would have never, never been possible if I did not have hospice. And um, so after his death, um, I just had a real desire to give back. Um, hospice had become pretty dear to my heart, and I deeply believed in their work. I decided that, you know, a volunteer position is something that I wanted to do, and I kind of, you know, looked at it as, you know, when one door closes, another door opens. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that's how I became a volunteer. I've done Camp Echo, I think, for 10 or 11 years. The program was designed by, by the hospice workers, and, and so um, you just facilitated those activities. But I was a buddy, which meant that I got oh, anywhere from two to three children. And um, so they hung with me for the whole weekend, of course, with everyone. But, you know, we, we became really tight over, you know, the whole weekend. And um, they had wonderful art activities. Um, we had a lot of physical time where we could play games outside and, and different um, exercise things. Um, did a lot of singing um, and a lot of talking. And um, it, it's, just, it's, it's just a wonderful um, opportunity for children and just a wonderful opportunity for me. I would say, well, if, if you believe in hospice and if this is something you want to do, um, don't be afraid to do it, you know. Uh, contact hospice, they have wonderful um, programs, uh, classes, uh, so you are pretty much prepared, you know, when you take on your first assignment and there's so many different things that you can do as, as a hospice volunteer. If you believe in this work and if, if you have a desire, um, then go for it. For me, I tried, you know, lots of different things and um, thinking, well, if I try a lot of different things, I'll find my niche. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because all the things are my niche because it all basically is the same. You're dealing with people that are in very, very stressful situations. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it doesn't matter if it's a children or, or you know, a very sick patient or a family member, you know, a caretaker. Um, you know, the whole philosophy of hospice, you know, covers everyone. So, um, but I would definitely say it's, a, it's, it's wonderful. And if you have a desire, go for it. With all sincerity and, and total honesty, um, it's become much more meaningful and so much richer. Um, I have met wonderful people. For me, it's just been a joyful ride, and um, you know, I just hope to continue it for a long time, or forever, have a long hospice will have me. <laughs> Julia, social worker, had called me, um, said that she had a young woman and um, who had terminal uh, lung cancer, and I met Julia, and. Um, she just had this deep desire to tell her own story from the very beginning all the way through. And it was something that um, she considered a gift. 
that she wanted to leave to her children and to her husband. And so um, we proceeded. And um, she was not worried. She was not nervous. She went right for it. <laughs> and uh, it took a while because I would come and we would record. And then I'd go home and translate and come back. And so it, 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 it took quite a while to do this. And, and she was very, very fussy because, you know, when I, when I would come home and transcribe what she had written, uh, what she had said, excuse me, I'd bring it back to her and she, I'd read it or she would read it and she'd say, no, this is not right, you know, and she'd change or we would make corrections and everything. She wanted to get it right. Um, so after the memoirs was completed, um, I just wanted to remain a volunteer and because um, we really had a good time together. She did not want, even though she was gravely, gravely mm -hmm. ill, she did not want her life to change. Mm -hmm. And so her family put her bed in the middle of the living room mm -hmm. and her family went about you know, their life, kids coming in from school or this or that. And there was Julia, always right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was very important to her. It was very, very important that she be a part of all that was going on. Through my doctor, Dr. Eldridge, and uh, when I couldn't do any more treatment for her, they suggested that with hospice. Okay. I asked Julie about it and she really didn't want to because she thought that meant the end, mm -hmm. you know. But as soon as we met the hospice ladies, it was like, mm -hmm. it was the best thing that happened to us. I mean, we couldn't have done it without them, that's for sure. There are so many ways it's, it's I mean, there are so many people that were involved, workers and nurses, volunteers, chaplain, I mean, it was, they, she went forward, you know, to hospice town, and she was, what the hell? She just, she found a lot about me, you know. I think they made it a lot easier, almost, for sure. And it was, we thought we were doing all we could do, best we could do. And when they came in, I mean, they just did so much for us. They uh, counseled for the kids, I mean, just everybody. The nurses being there, because we did. I mean, I'm not the nurse. But to have somebody there every week checking her, I mean, that meant a lot to the I definitely call because there's mm -hmm. no organization mm -hmm. like that. I mean, mm -hmm. from top to bottom, there's everyone. Mm -hmm. I would definitely, definitely call. I couldn't have done it without. I don't think Julie would have hurt. You know, this might have got her a little quicker without my mm -hmm. Just, I think it gave her something to look for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. just, just a bit of that. Her family, her friends, her loved ones. It's another reason why hospice was so good because they brought in more friends, more support, more love, and it just it, that's what kept her going. All she cared about was. And like Kate was saying, she loved to be right in the middle of her, and she just had to be in it all, you know, it was just what was going on with everybody else, her family. She always knew that she had somebody to rely on, you know, and I think it made her feel like not as much stress was on her actual, you know, our family, too, you know, because we had all this outside help coming and all the support from hospice, and, um, she, she loved 
don't hesitate to call. It's not, you know, I think because hospice does come in, you know, towards the end, like when you're not doing treatments and they mm -hmm. make you comfortable that people hesitate because they just think it's an organization that just comes in and makes you comfy and leaves. It's not personal, you know, but my mom got great friends on the hospice. She loved Kate to death. She loved Terry and Julia and everybody on our hospice team. Like they were lifelong friends, you know, and it don't hesitate. It's, it's a wonderful organization. Well, like the nurses and stuff, you know, they were there, like if we needed to change her, change her sheets, or, you know, they were, you know, they did it, you know, they helped us a ton, and it was, it was so nice to have that extra help, and Kate, she just, she did everything for my mom, she helped her get dressed, went out shopping with her to get, like, an outfit for my graduation, and would just take her anywhere, and, you know, just... I mean, in every way, you know, the help with the nurses and the volunteers and, you know, the memoir, that was amazing because there was a lot of things that, you know, I'd either forgotten or had just never been brought up about, like, my mom's childhood and stuff like that. And it, you know, brought it to my attention. It's something that I'll always have, you know, because you need something, you know, you can't ask. But, um, you know, it's something I'll always have and I'll all will be special to me and memoir and that, that was a huge thing that was very nice and it's great to have that there for you whenever you need it. Uh, they showed me how to take care. I mean we thought we were doing a good job but to keep her at home and make her comfortable. The, the nurses like take care of her, the volunteers show me how to change the sheets without getting her out of the bed and just I mean so many little things. That was with the medicine, I mean, the, she was, I mean, I probably become a pharmacist or so many minutes. I couldn't have done it without her. I mean, it's a, the spiritual part of it with the chaplain, I mean, just, there's so much support, you know, it just made you feel better about taking care of her, like you knew you were doing the right kind of job for her. We've never had experience with that. It was um, great to be taught how to be the caregiver that we wanted to be. Because, yes. you know, we wanted to do everything mm -hmm. perfect, just right, you know, everything perfect for it. And they came in and they taught us exactly how to do the right things and how to become the best caregivers, you know, we could be. And that was great. And the spiritual thing, you know, my mom was extremely religious and it was so nice to have some, a chaplain come mm -hmm. and you know, help her connect with, you know, her religious side, and it was, she really appreciated that a lot. Just that it's a great organization, it's, you know, everything that they do is just, it's great, and I, you know, it, I don't think it has as strong as a reputation as it deserves, maybe just because it is a scary thought, you know, to bring in hospice, it's just a scary point, you know, in everybody's life when they, it comes down to that, but um, it makes it a lot easier and it makes it a, a lot less scary, you know, you have all that support and all that help and it just, it makes it a lot more manageable.